Okay, great. I just want to let everyone know that I've worked with Mela and Dwayne and Ace and other initiatives during my 21 years at the Boston Public Health Commission in, in various um, departments of the city. And let me just say, working with ACE has been nothing but professional and the most collaborative work experience I've ever had. Through this picture, I just wanna share a little bit and give a big shout out to the T-Riders Union, um, which is a program of ACE that organizes public transit riders to build a unified voice and movement for the better public transportation in the greater Boston. The pictures that you're looking at is my first event with the TRG, with, the, with, with True. I'm just going to call them True. This is how that day went. I got a text message from Mella first saying, listen, we're going to be arriving early at Dudley Station, but everything should be in place. Then I got another call from her saying, listen, the bus drivers know that this is Rosa Park Day and the number 14 is moving through these streets. I knew right then and there that this was going to be a great opportunity for me to learn how to service the city of Boston residents with this powerhouse group called True. Now this was post COVID. So the most impressive thing that I can tell you is that True members and other organizations such as Transit Matters and Sierra Club, there was many other organizations. I can't get everybody's name down, but as they walked around and conversated with riders in Dudley Station, they were also pointing out that city officials were here. And you would see people walking over to the city officials. And at that time, you guys can see um, there is Councillor Wu. Um, and people were actually being able to tell them about their experience um, about riding the T. But the thing that shocked me the most was <laughs> listening to folks actually say things like to the organizers, Thank you for actually doing this for us because they were providing this voice to get better services for the people that were riding the, 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 the buses and service. On that day, you guys, I can look down at the bottom. There's a, on the bottom row, there's a beautiful woman with a black jacket on. Her name is Latoya Evans. And on that day, she was giving a wonderful tribute to her father who had recently passed away who had worked 35 years um, for the MBTA. He had moved to Augusta, Georgia and worked for the Martyr as well. And he had retired. And he was also known as one of the most favorite bus drivers. And that, that was just a moving event that whole day. Next slide, please. This slide represents the day we were in full COVID now, okay? And the weather was so cold that we were unable to participate with the rest of the national um, model, which was February 4th. We had to do our event on the 6th. That day, um, we passed out PPEs. Uh, we got a chance to speak to the writers um, about their writership. And also, as you can see on this day, we still had the counselor and counselor Janie and counselor Michelle Wu um, to show up in order to do something that had never been done before. They changed the transit day to transit month. So this proclamation now allows the whole month of February to be shared with Black History Month. How exciting for all of us. Um, and one of the things that we also had happen was that um, ACE um, operations director uh, who is LaToya, she actually provided a Facebook Live um, and went around and interviewed people. And it gave folks an opportunity to experience being a part of the group, even though it was so cold. Um, I have to say that when you talk about inclusion, using all your social media platforms in order, especially on that day, it was just so cold and, you know, it was really hard um, for us to stay out there for a long time, but the commitment of ACE and his partners really took me away. And I was so glad to still be a part and that they adopted me. The next slide, please. So this is where we are looking at planning for um, 2022. You know, we have things already lined up because we're still um, in COVID, but some things have changed. Um, New, it's now called Nubian Square. 
uh, we have a new mayor uh, by the name of Michelle Wu. So she's no longer a councilor, but she's also now our new mayor. And we are expecting to have her come out and do that proclamation. And we're really hoping for good weather. Um, and some of the things that we are looking earlier to be able to do is earlier engagement with different organizations with the toolkit that's been uh, presented and also working a little closer with the Disability Commission. Um, and one of the events that we have um, planned already is a two-day two um, screening of the Rosa Park um, story, which is going to be live streamed. And then we're going to be having a panel discussion um, with some of the students um, at the Hennigan School, uh, sixth and seventh and eighth graders. Now this is gonna be open to anyone, um, but we, we, we're still working on the details of the panelists that are gonna be on there. But we do hope that, um, that uh, Mayor Wu will be one of the panelists as well. Um, and also the T Writers Union will be launching what they called a new campaign and um, it's called Fix the 14. I know that they're still working on that. And that is um, one thing that uh, Mela and the TRI unit they're working on. And they have another campaign that they're working on that I didn't get a chance to write that one down. And I'm so sorry about that one. But these are some of the things that we're doing uh, already for planning. Next slide, please. All right. Oh, too far. Can you go back one, please? All right. So we're going to just talk about some real um, breaking news that I'm just going to tell you, Boston is on the mark. Um, Mayor Janey rolled out a free three-month um, free bus ride on the number 28. It was a pilot program. Um, as you can see the picture that day, um, and you can see some of the events uh, where um, uh, at the time, Councilor uh, Janie was attending. She's actually one of our um, mayors who do not have a car. And so she has depended on uh, public transportation and has been an advocate way before, um, you know, people said things were fashionable. Like she's been at the forefront. And so when you look at Boston um, offering this number 28 bus, and if you know Boston, this is a very uh, huge bus line that goes between Mattapan Square, Ruggles Station, and it's one of our busiest um, bus lines. Okay, and uh, let's go to the next slide. Thank you. And this was groundbreaking. Um, on the first full day in office, Mayor Wu appropriated $8 million to make the 23, 28, and 29 bus completely free for two years. Groundbreaking. This is unbelievable. You've seen when people talk about how can you deal with equity? How can you actually look at the opportunities of having equity in the transit system? This is it. For for literally for two years, these buses will be free. Now, I'm just going to share a moment with you, and then I'm uh, going to get to the last slide, and um, so that we can, um, we need to go to the next, go back to the other one. I'm sorry, someone moved it. Yes, that one. Stay with the one with, not that one. The next one. There, hold that one. Um, this is groundbreaking. Like I said, um, I've had the opportunity to uh, some days be at the intersection. And I'm just gonna, for people in the Boston area who know this, Warren Street and Quincy. So when you are at Warren Street and Quincy, you're looking at the buses coming out. They're shooting up this Warren Street. And, and if it's at night, all you see is the bus numbers. And these buses are moving fast. And it's been so wonderful to see the positiveness of people utilizing these services and the buses are moving extremely fast. That means people are getting in and getting off and going places. And um, this is one of the most exciting things that is happening in Boston right now. And I can't begin to tell you how wonderful and happy we are. Um, next slide, please. Now, this has been one of the things in the city that um, has been groundbreaking as well. And this is actually the MBTA. I do not work for them, but I want to share this. Um, you're looking at 
the middle, it says the new center running bus lane. Love them or hate them. This is the state's first centered bus lane that debuted. And I have the fortunate every day, Monday through Friday to actually see this because I have to get to my job. And so I have actually seen um, where, um, let me just put it away, the drivers don't like it, but people who are riding the bus do because it's actually increasing uh, time for them to have, I mean, have less time to get to their destination. This is supposed to prove that between each bus stop, is going to reduce by four to seven minutes on quality of time. So, um, you know, for people who have been complaining that it literally took from Dudley Station to Mattapan an hour and a half to get home, we're hoping to see big changes in a lot of things with the commute time for folks and people in cars. We just have to wait. That's what I was going to happen. Um, and on here on this um, slide, you'll see a few other things here. Um, that the T has been doing. Um, they have some upcoming uh, projects that um, are going to be revolutionary if they um, get them through the community. Um, they're actually planning on putting the same center lanes into the blue, um, into Grove Hall. And that is actually something that um, I'm asking for people to pay close attention to so that you can go um, to your community meetings and discuss this because it's, it's not a done deal, but they have gotten the funding for it. So I'm gonna close out um, by just saying um, a few things that I think is very important. Um, today, I really would like to extend a huge thank you to all the city of Boston grassroots organizations, elected officials and stakeholders, and the real folks who have been working every day to make a change in the racial equity with transportation. But most of all, I really hope that the cities and towns may look at Boston as a North Star to provide more opportunities of free bus services to their communities. And if you are still interested in working with us um, on the projects that are coming forward for 2022, please get engaged with us. Please contact Mela, myself, or Ann so that we can reach back out to you because, like I said, um, they've been at the forefront for many, many years, and we can always use more hands and more people to move the thing. There's a bus that they sing about in Jamaica called the Jolly Bus, and it's the number <laughs> one bus. And some people in Jamaica, it's the happy bus that gets you from one spot to another. This is what we're on. We're on the Jolly Bus. <laughs> and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nancy. Wonderful work. Wonderful work in Boston.